Hey guys, Dr. Gooden back with another stats video, this time showing you how to generate a correlation matrix in SPSS. Now I've linked a file in the description of this video so you can go ahead and download it and follow along with me in the video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to take a correlation matrix, generate it in SPSS, and if you stay around to the end, I'll show you how to make sense of it by moving it over into Excel and using conditional formatting. So stick to the end of the video and I'll show you that cool trick with correlation matrices. I mean, as cool as it can be, being that we're talking about statistics. So let's dive right into the file. I have it open in SPSS. And what we'll see right from the get go is that this is a group of athletes. We've used this data set before. We have 47 athletes and it looks like a number of physical and performance parameters. So each of these performance metrics has been collected during a hypothetical uh, performance testing battery. We have a sprint time, we have jump height, we have their peak propulsive force, so the peak force during that jump, peak power during that jump. We have peak force, which is a measurement of strength, uh, peak force relative to body mass, so now we're scaling it to their body mass, and then the rate at which these athletes develop that force between zero and 250 milliseconds, which is a measure of explosiveness. So really we have all these variables that should be uh, somewhat highly correlated as we've seen in previous literature, but we're not sure for our sample and for our particular group of athletes, right? Maybe it's a particular uh, subset, maybe it's collegiate, I don't know, soccer players, or maybe it is high school volleyball players. And perhaps in the literature, you haven't seen yet the um, correlations between these various physical parameters, and we want to explore that. So what we will do is go up to the Analyze button, down to Bivariate Correlation under the Correlate menu. Click on that, and we will bring over all of the variables that we want to analyze. So let's go ahead and highlight all of them. I'm holding down the shift key and clicking down at RFD 250 and that highlights all of them. Click on this arrow and that brings them into this variable box. Now what SPSS will do is generate a correlation matrix computing the correlation between each of these variables with each of the other variables. Now we're doing a Pearson R correlation which is a measure of the linear relationship. Uh, we could also look at uh, Kendall's Tau B or Spearman, but we'll stick with Pearson as that's the most frequently run correlation and that's the one that most students are learning and, and most uh, sports science researchers currently use. We want it to be a two-tailed test of significance and I'm actually going to not flag significant correlations. And the reason I'm not gonna flag them is because I want to export my data into, uh, into Excel in order to conditionally format it. And when the significant correlations are flagged, it puts a little asterisk next to each of them that are significant, which is kind of a bear to work with in Excel. You have to go delete them if you wanna apply conditional formatting. So I will leave that off of our results, but if you're not importing into Excel, then you can totally leave that on. Click OK. And the only output is this nice large correlation matrix. Now, we have a lot of variables, so it's going to be difficult to start to look for trends and patterns when we have uh, you know, all of this information. We have not only the, the correlation coefficient, we see here between uh, jump height and sprint time, a large negative relationship, negative 0.838. So that's a that's a very strong relationship in the negative direction. <clears throat> but we also have the significance, and it looks like just about, yep, all of these uh, correlations are significant at at least the 0 0.01, P equals 0 0.01 level. I don't, think, I don't think I see anything over that. And then we also get the N, or the total sample size. Now in this case, the sample size and the, um, and the significance are somewhat uh, now in this case, the sample size and the significance values are somewhat unnecessary because we see that all of them are statistically significant. We know that there's 47 uh, values in each of these. What we're really interested in exploring are some of the uh, trends in which variables correlate most strongly with other variables. Perhaps we have a single variable of interest. Maybe it's jump height. Maybe this is a set of basketball athletes and we really want to know how do all of these other variables either underpin jump height or which ones are most strongly correlated. So to, to look at that quickly and assess it visually, I'm going to export this into Excel. 
So let's do that right now. Click on this export button and Excel is already selected. And I'm going to put this, let's see, right on my desktop. And then I'll click OK. So this is what the Excel file will look like after you've exported from SPSS. And we, we have the syntax of what we did up here. We have some notes to remind us of exactly which options we selected in SPSS. And this is nice in case you have a really extensive um, long output file. In our case, we don't. And now here we see the correlation matrix. And what I'm going to do is delete the significance and the sample rows and then conditionally format this so that we can start to see some trends in the data. Okay, I have all of the upper right quadrant cleared and I have the sample and significance rows deleted. And this leaves us just with our correlation coefficient. So what I'll do is I will highlight these numbers, go to conditional formatting, new rule, and I want a three color scale with numbers specifying where I want the uh, minimum, midpoint, and maximum. So the midpoint, sorry, sorry, the minimum, I want to be negative one, midpoint is zero, maximum is one, and then for colors, let's go dark red for negative, white for zero, and a nice dark blue for maximum. Now what this conditional formatting will do is allow me to quickly and visually assess the strength and direction of the relationships. The darker blue, the more positive, the darker red, the more negative, and the closer to white, the less of a relationship there is between any two variables. So we click OK, and look, this looks, let's resize these a little bit. Okay, so now we can quickly look at some trends. So first of all, we see that, neg that sprint time correlates negatively with all the other variables. And this is to be expected because the better you are at sprinting, the lower your time is. Whereas the better you are at everything else, jump height, uh, force output, relative force output, all of that, the numbers go up as you get better. And so for instance, we see this very strong negative correlation between jump height and sprint time. The next strongest we can quickly see is between peak propulsive power and sprint time as far as sprinting goes. If we look at peak propulsive power, it looks like it also correlates strongly in the positive direction with jump height and peak propulsive force. Looking over at something like RFD or relative peak force, we can see that for the most part, they correlate less strongly with the other variables. And the weakest correlation by far is between peak propulsive force and relative peak force. Now this low correlation makes sense to me because someone who's familiar with these uh, measurements, I know that relative peak force is usually collected during an isometric mid-thigh pull or some other isometric strength test, whereas propulsive peak force is tested di uh, dynamically during a vertical jump. So it's during, they're during different movements and therefore they have a lower correlation with each other. So that's how you can quickly and visually assess the strength and direction of many correlations at once. If you have a load of variables that you are interested in exploring, and if it's part of your research design to run all of those correlations and to evaluate them, then pulling it out of SPSS, putting it into Excel and conditionally formatting it might be a good way to go. But regardless, make sure that it's part of your research design. We don't wanna be looking at correlations and then just cherry picking the ones that are conveniently strong or that show that your hypothesis was correct because we know that that is not good research design. All right, guys, so now you know how to create a correlation matrix in SPSS and how to evaluate it in Excel. In a previous video, I did show you how to run correlations in Excel itself, and you can create actually the same exact correlation matrix if you choose to do so in Excel. It takes a little bit more time, but I do have a video showing you how to do that. To keep leveling up your stats game, click on over to the next video or playlist that pops up on the screen. If you check out my channel, I also have other kinesiology related videos, sports science videos, strength and conditioning videos. So check that out as well. I'll see you guys on the next video.